Okay, I'm just going to show you just a, a quick demonstration of what we were talking about, what I was talking about with the uh, offbeat there. Okay, when we go from the F-sharp minor... Really, all you have time for is to just grab this last A and just play it. So, uh, and just like strum it, really. Because it's going to go one and two and three and four and one and two and... Okay, let's do that with the chorus here. So you can you can also add this little that little uh, voicing of A up there if you'd like. Doesn't matter, but uh, I just throwing that in. Now one of the things so you can hear how that's on that off beat one and two and three and four and one and two and okay. So uh, it's that and going into three um, one and two and three and four and that's a little bit difficult, but you know you'll you'll get that I know because uh, once you, once you see that it's no problem for you. Okay, now another thing I was going to address is tone really quickly. Now on that, you can hear I have a fair amount of overdrive. Which again is a lot. If I take away the delay and reverb, check it out. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, so I have a lot on there. Now, why do I do that? Well, it has it helps with sustain, and and a lot of times if I'm playing like a rhythm part, right? I can I can turn on both pickups and um, uh, if I was just doing that palm muting at the beginning, like. Actually, that's a lot of bass for me, so I'd probably pull down the top pickup and uh, the the neck and um, and just keep it on both. But I still still I'm still strumming. I've got a little bit of a room simulator on here, so I'll take that off. So it's 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 overdriven, but it's not crazy. Now, if I want it to be, I can put on the bridge pickup and just pick harder. I didn't change anything. So, and if I want it to be really, really pretty pretty tame, I can just put it on that front pickup, the neck pickup, and just play lighter. Okay, so so that's that's where my overdrive usually sits is right about there for most songs, you know, and then when I go for worship songs, and then uh, if I want to add reverb, I add just um, a pretty good like this is just uh, what is that? That's just a modulated reverb but uh let's just go with a regular let me show you what um uh let's see what have i got that's pad let's go with plate so a good plate reverb would be like that let's turn that mix down but the decay is up so it kind of carries on back there, and the tone is actually, I turn the tone down, okay, and I cut some of the highs, because I hate the grainy highs in uh, reverb. So it's just a little bit there. Now for the delay, I actually have quite a bit, if I turn off the reverb and turn off the overdrive. 
Okay. Now I can turn down the repeats there. Add the mix up. Okay, so it's pretty noticeable when, when it's all by itself. Now that's a tape delay, and I don't have any modulation on that. I sometimes just don't like modulation because it's overused right now um, in a lot of worship songs. So let, let's, let's use this as an example real quick. Here, here is the song with me using just a little bit of delay and a little bit of reverb and no overdrive. So here's the chorus. One more time. Okay, now the, the problem there is if you listen to the vocal, she's almost yelling. Da, 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 da. And the drums, hear that? Hear those, the toms? That's really loud. Now, really, in this recording of the song, all you hear is synth and drums and vocals. You really don't hear any guitar. So we have to think of, well, what would a guitar do? I mean, I know it's in there, but it really, I, I, I would be playing it. And I have played this song a lot of times at church. And um, I... I would add a lot more overdrive to, uh, to, uh, you know, how do I put it to, uh, just up the dynamics of the song. So I'm going to, I'm going to put more delay, more reverb. So it's past 12 o'clock on both of those. Just a little bit. It's not quite to, well, it might be one o'clock on both of those. Okay. But again, so this is, and I'm going to go the bridge pickup. Here we go. Okay, so you have like a little bit more dynamic there, a little bit more punch. Um, and so that that for overdrive for me is, uh, I still got that up past 12 o'clock. Again, that, that, that setting. It's a lot. So, um, uh, but that, that, you know, is what I've always done uh, in songs and, uh, you know, take that with a grain of salt. That's, that's what, uh, I've taught any of the other guys like, gosh, from Davis to whoever to do. Um, and, uh, but, but, you know, you, you can do, you can manipulate that as you want, but I just wanted to show you a little bit about the, the tone and the sound. And also even my amp sound, if you listen to my, my amp sound, lastly, my amp sound, I'm using a, this is the Strymon Iridium. Okay. You can tell it's turned up. It's breaking up just a little bit. But it's like, it's, it's really, it's really loud. So I'm, I'm. I'm, uh, what's, what, what you're happening is what's happening is you're simulating the, uh, power tubes, which are six L sixes inside of a fender amp in this case, where I am really pushing the power tubes, not just the preamp tubes. Uh, I don't really prefer preamp distortion. I like power tube distortion and the power section and really like pushing that hard. So my amp is always, <laughs> Uh, it could be, it could, it's kind of distorted. Um, but, uh, but not quite. Okay. So, so again, it's not super clean, but, uh, but I use a lot of, 
gain. And uh, that's just something to uh, think about as you're going through that. And, and really, gain is different. Again, over here, as I'm using like this, uh, this Strymon uh, Iridium. So that's my amp. And then this Origin Effects Revival Drive, which really uh, adds all my uh, overdrives. And that's it. And then this is just a compressor, which I always have on. And it's barely there. Um, but, but again, a good overdrive is nice, round, and fat sounding. And then, you know, this, the, the processing in this, that's what you're paying for. And, and all processors are, are created differently. Um, again, that's why they cost so much, uh, all that they have put into this to make it sound really phenomenal for, for that. Um, but this kind of thing, the, this, this pedal, which was $400 is completely worth it um and and so you're not just paying for a name or paying for a brand you're paying for quality and that's the that's the analog to digital to digital to analog conversion and how they do that the coding all of this stuff that they do to make it sound like a real amp of course i played real tube amps for 30 years so i really know the sounds of those tube amps and um and this has three different tube amp settings which are you know you have a fender tube amp setting you have a marshall tube amp setting and uh, a vox ac30 tube amp setting and all of them sound very much like those amps and that's all you get with this pedal for four hundred dollars so they're they've put a lot of effort into those three amp models that really make a huge difference and and again i don't want to uh understate what the revival drive does uh that is a great pedal too and again it's expensive you know i, I paid like 350 maybe for it used and uh and it makes a huge difference like i can put a tube screamer which is a nice uh you know sort of an 808 tube screamer or whatever uh here and I can show you that it's not going to sound the same. Now it's going to be different, uh, but uh, this just sounds like, a, this is an amazing pedal for people that have been around for a long time playing tube amps and trying to get tube amp, power amp distortion. Um, this this sounds really good to me. Um, so, so these two things make that so that you can get your volume up because volume, uh, creates a, a better tone. When tube amps are pushed at a very high volume, you get, at, again, that power amp distortion or overdrive, and that's what gives it a natural bass Okay, the higher you turn up a Fender amp, the more bass it has. Uh, so you actually don't need to turn up the bass equalization on there. You just can you can actually turn it down, or else it'll get too muddy. So um, so that's what this simulates, and this simulates, and they put a lot of research and time and money into that and those two things do that now it's not saying that a processor a multi-effects unit won't do that it just won't do it as well because there are certain multi-effects units that are good but the analog to digital conversion is just not the same that's why a line six pod or spider is not going to sound as good as you know the uh and certainly not even the line six helix i i really don't like any line six products because they don't sound real to me but uh if you go into axe effects um they sound real to me and that that's why you put you know you get a little effects unit and it costs a thousand dollars uh because and that's their cheapest thing right now uh, because it really sounds like the real thing. Um, and there's it's processing speed and all sorts of things. So that's where you get into computers and why like a little uh, iPad um, does not cost as much as a, a Mac Pro, um, you know, or, or something like that. So anyway, that's a little bit of a um, long-winded 
you know, discussion about, and we can talk about that more later with uh, pedals and whatnot. But it, again, it's not about spending money. It's never about spending money. It's about uh, what you get for what you pay. And, uh, you know, and the, if you want to have those sounds of a real tube amp, you're going to pay for it because, you know, it costs a lot. Anyway, We'll talk about that in less and hope that helps.